This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Eric Ashdown, founder of Indie Loop. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to welcome Eric Ashdown, the CEO of the company Indie Loop. So hi Eric and thanks for joining me. How's it going? I'm going, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's, it's been a great South by Southwest. It's been a lot of fun. There's so many great acts, so much great talent and just a great energy as a whole. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. That's great. And so first of all, uh, give us a quick overview of what Indie Loop does. Yes, Indie Loop. So um, in a nutshell, every kid wants to be a DJ, am I right? We realize that people are willing to pay for music when it's interactive and every kid now wants to be a DJ, they want to be a producer. So we built a cloud-based solution where people take stem tracks of different songs. If you don't know what a stem track, a stem track is the isolated instrumental, so vocal only, drums only, guitar only. Uh, they mash them together on our platform and then once they've made this creation of this new mashup, they're able to share it with their friends on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Before they're able to share it, a transaction takes place and we're charging about 50 cents per stem right now. And so we're seeing users convert anywhere from three to four, to, uh, well, two to four dollars is about the accurate price. So this is interesting. So when did the company start? We started in July, 2012. Uh, it was, it's really interesting how it started. We, it was a friend of mine and I wanted to be a DJ. I wanted to be a producer. I couldn't figure out Ableton. I couldn't figure out Pro Tools. I just didn't have the time more than anything to invest. And at the end of the day, I, I said, all I really want to do is make a remix or a mashup and I'd be willing to pay for it. Yeah. If it was done easy enough and quick enough, just so you can get that social validation like on Facebook or Twitter. Absolutely. And so, and so from then, how did you set up to, to build a company? Well, we built a prototype. But, uh, we built a prototype in in the cloud, and it was just you know a, we we wanted to think of the simplest e user interface. So have a picture of a have a picture of an artist, then a picture of a guitar, a picture of a drum track, and just literally click on it, drag it, drop it, and it would just yeah. compress to the same beat per minute. It was more like it, the user interface thing was easy. It was building the technology that actually makes it you feel like a pro within seconds. That yeah. took a long time. Yeah, that's interesting. So, how did you uh, um, how how do you target that market? So, it's uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that want to do what you were setting out to do, uh, but it's also a question of reaching them and making sure that they, they find out about the company. So, uh, when when you when you launched, what was your first strategy there? Well, we actually haven't launched yet. We're still oh, okay, cool. we're still in beta. We we're still in beta, and our iPad app just got is launching now. Uh, Great, check it out if you want the App Store. Awesome. Yeah, it's, we're really excited about it. We're right now and. We ended up doing a bunch of licensing deals at the very beginning. This is yeah. the most complicated part because now you're going to labels, you're yeah. explaining <laughs> this is derivative work, it's remixing music, there's a revenue model associated, you're getting paid. It's a lot of things, it's a lot of problems people have been dealing with and all of a sudden a solution shows up and no one's yeah. really ready for it. So we haven't launched because we're doing, we're looking to get more content deals, we're looking to do more things. Sure. But we're in a private beta and we've seen some revenue. So you know, I feel like we validated the revenue model, which yeah. is probably one of the biggest hurdles we have to overcome. Exactly. I mean, it's interesting as well because uh, you uh, operate in, an, in, a, in a niche that would also allow you to, for example, work with very specific uh, independent uh, dance music labels. So have you have you tried that path and uh, what's the reaction been on that front? Well, yeah, it, it's funny because we've spoken to a lot of labels and here's the thing. A lot of labels don't actually have the stems, Right. which is the, if, like I said, we, we already know that, but they don't have the stems. If, if they don't have the stems, they're like, well, I don't really want to go and get it because it's time, it's effort, it's energy. And it's a lot of work to go through a deal and deliver them and do things like that. So yeah. it's more like it's it's on a case by case basis. So sure. That's really what's 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 kind of pushed it forward is some people, some labels have come to us and they've said I want my 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 stems on here because I see this as a way to engage our fan base. Yeah generate some revenue at the same time so yeah is, is it a headache to split up the royalties uh, depending on how, how much samples of which track have been used no not at all we are the way our system works is instead of if you take a third of a song an eighth of a song a, a whole stem track we charge you by the stem okay cool because the only way derivative work and creating a remix and all that stuff would ever work is if you charge by the stem. By the stem, because charging an eighth for this, the no, that eighth is repeated, complicated, yeah. it doesn't work. The second you set you 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 simple you simplify the entire experience. One, it's simple for users. Two, it's simple for accounting purposes. Three, people are willing to pay and labels are willing to license you content. Great. And talking about the finished product, uh, so is that embeddable? How is it shared? And and uh, I guess like that's where the main consumers come from, the labels point to be. Yeah. Well, the whole thing is that there's no digital downloads at any point. So yeah. 
all of the content created is just shared through our platform and it goes to Facebook and it goes to Twitter. And there, there's, there really is no final creation. And even in all of our deal structures, it actually says that the copyright holder retains their rights of the song. If we're going to figure out another way to monetize it, they'll be compensated. We're we're just not at that point yet. We're just doing the upfront transaction. Yeah, sure, of course. And uh, I just think I, I remember when I first started working in the sort of interactive music field that there were there was a still quite a bit of resistance from artists uh, uh, as far as messing with their music. Are you seeing that now? With uh, you know, there's a, a lot of different companies in, in, that are doing bits and bobs in the space. Are you seeing a, a shift in trend of artists being more open to the idea? Definitely. Um, I think Beatport, for example, and Daba Music, SoundCloud are all three companies that have done really good. At, at acquiring stems and yeah. posting remix contests. This is how the artist has been getting their stuff out there. I think the next logical step is that the artist is putting their music out there to be remixed as a promotional tool. Yeah. There should be some sort of revenue model associated with it. So I, I feel like we're, unlike other companies who I think we're way ahead of their time, uh, some companies are laggards and unfortunately, you know, just come in too late. I think we're at, we're at really at the, we're really at the right spot with what we're doing. Uh, and so uh, looking forward, uh, you know, for the next few months, of course, is just released the, the iPad app. Is it just North America? Um, it's, I, I'm pretty, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even hundred percent sure. <laughs> we released it in English territories because yeah. the way our, uh, we, we don't use Apple standard terms of terms of service. We use our own. So we have to translate it to different languages. Right. Um, I'm from, I'm from Quebec. I'm from Montreal. So I speak French. So obviously we're, we're, we're talking about translating it for the French market is the, probably the number one priority. And there's other countries that have approached us who want to put their music on Indie Loop. Yeah. And that's kind of something that would go along with it. Uh, there's Brazilian companies we're talking to now and they want to use this as part part of their marketing campaigns. Yeah. And so we would logically try to translate it to Portuguese at that point. Yeah, sure. So in terms of looking at uh, how you, you could expand this as well, like one of the potential avenues could be also to bring in uh, smaller artists, independent artists to get their music remixed, right? Absolutely. Um, we just actually did a panel talking to a room full of artists about stems and how when they're recording their music, they should actually get them. Not just for our platform, but because with sync licensing, it's the number one request all the time. They say, if you're doing a commercial, a video game, something else. So we wanted to educate artists on behalf of that because most just don't have their stems available. Yeah. For the ones that do, we just added a feature where you can upload directly to Indie Loop. All we do is we probably take a couple of days internally to make sure there's no samples and no other derivative work in what sure. you're submitting. Because last thing we want is you know somebody who's somebody to get sampled and then you know we're already doing remixing and yeah, and you and you need to have a good relationship with labels. So exactly. You know. <laughs> so so we just vet everything internally uh, yeah. before up uh, before allowing any uploads. So we've had we haven't we haven't announced it. We haven't launched it. We haven't pushed it. It's not yeah. a core feature. So uh, it's it's something we've just done recently. That's great. And so uh, finally looking. At at uh, the future for the company, you know, what what are the, the things that are exciting you the most uh, for the next few months? Oh man, um, that's a great question. I think we're we've we've been approached by a couple of brands and a couple of other platforms, like people who are, are are interested in using it as a marketing tool, yeah, as a fan engagement tool. So I think that there's a lot of people who who like the idea of doing remix contests with us because it helps them, through marketing perspective, reach a larger audience naturally because yeah. our software is just dead simple that it allows better engagement, you know, especially for people who, especially for genres of music that aren't generally remix friendly, like rock music and uh, yeah. funk music and stuff like that. Well, not remix friendly, but the the audience of that music yeah. would not conventionally listen to it. Or, That's or fantastic. Or Ableton or Pro Tools. And, uh, and so, uh, I, you know, I would recommend people to go and check out this. Is it IndieLoop.com? It's IndieLoop.com. You can check it out in the iPad app store. Our Android tablet app will be out in the next month or two. And then after that, but probably mid-summer, end of summer, you'll see the iPhone and the Android uh, mobile version. So uh, where are you based? Just, just so. <laughs> we are based in <laughs> Vancouver, Canada. Okay, uh, great. Beautiful Vancouver, beautiful city. And, and there's a few startups down there, right? There's a couple of startups, not as many in other places in the world. It's not sure. a very startup-friendly city, so I feel like we've, we've, we've really... We've really pushed it forward and we're really yeah. testing our luck staying there every day, but it, it's a beautiful place to be and we're happy to be in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's, it's a lovely place. I've been there before, so. Oh, you have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, it's no great. Way. Uh, yeah, I, it's I, awesome. love, I, lo I like Vancouver a lot. No, uh, you know, I, I like asking people that are not from the usual hubs just how the community is like, and so that's... Uh, the community is, the Vancouver startup community is not like any other startup community I've ever been to. Um, right. Like, and especially in Canada, I mean, Montreal and Toronto have both amazing startup communities. And Vancouver is a very, I, I don't know how to say it, nobody thinks big. Yeah. 
it's very much, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna corner this segment of the market. There's no mass market, there's no mass consumer. And I think we really tried to push through something crazy there, especially when there's no music, there's no real music industry there either. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Eric, for your time. Thank and you for uh, uh, thanks for listening to the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest. Go and check out IndieLoop.com and uh, follow the show on DigitalMusicTrends.com or YouTube.com slash Digital Music Trends. And you can check us out on Twitter at IndieLoop Music. I-N-D-I-L-O-O-P. Thank you.